Give me fuel, give me fire, give me double shot as Welcome to Charlotte Murder Speedway for the Hostile Takeover Bank Roval 400 with five more races to go. This is the second elimination race and the last road course on the schedule to see who will be in and who will be out. Let's take a look at our starting grid. In row one, Light McQueen in a no mistake situation and Ryan Laney starting in second place for the second week in a row. In row two, Chase Raceline a must win situation after going upside down at Talladega last week with Brandon Powercar starting in 4th place. In row 3, championship contenders Daniel Suarez, last year's winner, and Colin Bargain in his first Charlotte Roval start. In row 4, Conrad Cameron and Jackson Storm. In row 5, Bobby Swift and Terry Cargas. In row 6, Cal Weathers and last week's winner, Cruz Ramirez. In row 7, Jimmy Cables and Ed Truncan. In row 8, Phil Tankson and H.J. Hollis. In row 9, Master Dragon 4000 and Brian Spark, the Memorial Day Race Weekend winner. And starting in row 10 are Bubble Wheel House and Jay McPillar. Here's the race format. 6 laps, 13.68 miles around the 2.28 mile road course oval track with 17 turns and pit road speed is 40 miles per hour. All right, in the front straightaway, we changed the restart zone, so instead of restarting outside of the bus stop, we now restart inside of it. Anyone trying to skip the bus stop will be black flagged. The pace car is off to the pits. Here we go. We're ready for the last road course race. Here in the 2024 season, meanwhile, Ryan Laney and Light McQueen leads the field to the green flag and the HTV Rob 400 is underway. Here they come inside of the racetrack, so they're not going directly into turn one from the oval. There's turn one in the infield road course. There's lots of turns here, so it will be hard to remember which. Which is which, unless it really have terrible memory. Here they come out of turn number four and going into one of the many straightaways in this track. Brandon Powercar and Colin Bargain are side by side for third place. Now they're side by side behind them. By McQueen already with the lead. And Colin Bargain has passed the number 7 of Brandon Power Car for 3rd place. Ooh, we got contact. The 6 of Bubble Wheelhouse gets turned by the number 4, Jaden McPillar. Maybe Jaden McPillar is desperate or something. Alright, we're about to show a replay to see what just happened. So the race is on the top and the bottom is just showing the replay. So the 4 made contact with the 6. We spun him out. That's some dirty racing. Oh, Jay McCullough was trying to skip the bus stop. And here comes Light McQueen out of the fourth turn from the oval, now entering the 17th turn, and he's gonna lead lap one here at Charlotte Martyr Speedway. And Colin Bargain has made a pass for second place, trying to go after the number 95 of Light McQueen and advance to the next round of the playoffs. Here's a look at Colin Bargain's teammate, Master Dragon 4000. He's not looking good right now. There's a chance they might be eliminated. And Jay McPillar has passed to number 41. And the 31 of Terry Cargas gets turned around in the first turn. Again with Jay McPillar's dirty tactics in this race. Here's a replay of what just happened. So while I was talking about the 41 of Master Dragon 4000, the Ford tried to move out of the double zero's way and then he just turns to number 31. Is Jenny McCullough going to continue being a war machine or something? Here's Bobby Swift 
trying to battle out the number 019 of Daniel Suarez, and right now he's in fourth place, so it's fine if he finishes in this position, but next week it's where we get real and we're going to see who's going to be in the championship four within a few weeks at Miami. As you can see, Light McQueen's in the lead, so if he wins this race, he'll be part of the advance party with Cruz Ramirez and Daniel Suarez. Colin Bargain trying to reach reach up to him. Master Dragon 4000 not looking in this playoff form right now, so he's trying to go after the number 00, 33, 68, 42, and 20, including his teammate JD McPillar. Now here comes Light McQueen coming out of the fourth oval turn. Now into turn number 15 and 16. There's that restart zone I was talking about earlier. We're going to use it if we get a caution. Now here we go with four laps to go here at Charlotte Murder Speedway and get ready for the halfway jam. Contact Jaden McPillar and Brandon Power Car. The seven and the four made contact with each other. Jaden McPillar trying to move to number seven because he's been doing thumb shenanigans and he drops some debris coming out of the infield road course. Jaden McPillar's really terrible tactics are, go are going into effect right now. He's currently sitting in fifth place against the number 24 of Chase Racela trying to move the 24 out of the way. Oh, they make contact and the 4J McPillar spins on the back straightaway and he brings out the first caution of the day. The last smoke on the back stretch. And he's gonna have to go back to where he was before the caution came out. And we're about to see what just happened. Alright so the 4 is trying to get the 24 out of the way. Then the 4 just turned around. That's a bonehead move because there's a chance you could just be eliminated from the playoffs or instead you could just even take out someone else's playoff hopes. Try wrecking the 24 Chase Race Lot on the back straight away. Turns around. There's not more than 24 Chase Race Lot. Mm -mm. Before what he did was just wrong. We'll be right back since Jay McPillar brings out the first caution of the day. Welcome back to the HTB Robo 400. We're ready to go back green next time by once the lights are off the pace car. Right now we're currently in turn number one. So once we're in turn number two from the oval, the lights out are out of the pace car. Now there's the lights and the uh, text changed from caution to going back green on the race's name on the left top corner. And we're about to restart double foul, so like McQueen to the inside and Colin Bargain to the outside. Hmm, with the chances of Colin Bargain being in the outside, he could win this race. And also we weren't able to finish all six remaining laps under green. Or all four remaining laps, sorry. So we're about to do overtime. So if the leader gets the white flag, the next flag will end the race. So it's a matter of if it's a caution or the checker flag. And if they wreck before the leaders catch the white flag, the yellow flag is coming back out and we're about to restart again. And we also have a limited attempts like the last time we were at Talladega. Anyways, the pace car is off for the pits. Here we go, ready for a two lap shootout here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Overtime restart number one, the green flag is back in the air here at Charlotte. Oh, you see what I 
What I mean about the outside line being better than the inside line, Colin Bargain's already in the lead in the number 10 IHOP car. That's going to be a difficult time for the number 95 of Light McQueen. Now side by side for second place, Chase Ricelaw versus Light McQueen. Oh, and the 19 gets turned by the number 4, Jane McPillar. No caution is out. That is pretty dangerous, and the officials are just sleeping on where they're standing. He just got turned immediately. So Jay McPillar just turned the number 19 of Bobby Swift and just slammed into the turn 3 or turn 4 wall. Meanwhile, Colin Bargain is just racing. He's just flying out there. Jane McPillar trying to move against the number 95 and 24. Now here comes Colin Bargain going through the second bus stop on the back straightaway. This turn is pretty tricky for many other racers and Colin Bargain went sideways. Good thing he didn't wreck otherwise that race would have gone to waste and he'd been eliminated from the playoffs. The 19 of Bobby Swift is the lowest playoff racer right now after that wreck. And he has been confirmed he will not be eliminated, so he will advance to the next round of the playoffs. Master Dragon 4000 is going to have to catch up to the leaders. Here we go, white flag, one more time around here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, so the next flag will end the race. Doesn't matter if it's a caution or a checkered flag. Oh, Jay McKellar gets turned on turn number one, no caution is out yet. He tried to wreck it the number 24, Chase raced a lot again, and... And the back of the field is pitting already. What's going on? Jay McPillar is driving backwards. And Master Dragon 4000 pitting. That's going to hurt him a ton. Jay McPillar goes airborne. He immediately went airborne when he went to turn two. That's going to hurt him even more. Here's Colin Bargain. Leading the field back to the checkered flag, and there goes Brandon Power Car entering the infield road course. There's an armor like McQueen trying to get out the infield road course, and now he's turning one to the roll hole. Now the leaderboard has been closed already, as you see on the left top of your screen. Now, Colin Bargain has a few more miles away from victory. Now I'm through that back stretch. Chicane for the final time. Now, entering turn three from the Oval. Colin Bargain has three different wins of the 2024 season. He won at Richmond, New Hampshire, Florida. Now he's going to carve his name here at Charlotte Murder Speedway for being the first rookie to win in the Roval. Now, coming out of turn number 17, this win will punch him to the round of six. And there's that checkered flag, along with Mike McQueen, Chase Racelot, H.J. Hollis, and Ryan Laney. Congratulations to Colin Bargain for winning the HTV Roval 400. And Lightning McQueen has clutched his way inside the playoffs. And Chase race slot. Well, his hopes are over. He wasn't able to make it to the playoffs, so he's been eliminated. Jay McPillar goes upside down, coming out into that turn. Why? He just jumped a curve or something. Alright, so earlier in the final lap, he tried to wreck the number 24 Chase Racelot, slammed that wall, and the officials decided not to bring out the yellow flag again, and he starts to do his best Light McQueen impersonation, but instead he went backwards, and then he went airborne for a few seconds. That is unbelievable jumped the curve started barrel rolling once never seen a flip like that in any other non super speedway track well Jamie McKellar has still advanced to the playoffs but still that is a really dumb move for anybody to do even if you're not in the playoffs
Here are the official results. Colin Barton is the fastest car of the day. The round of six has been set, so Chase Race Line Master Dragon 4000 has been eliminated from competing for a championship. Next week, we're racing at Las Vegas Murder Speedway for the Strat 400 starting next Friday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific and 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is the Canicam 27, signing out.